In this video we're going to review graphing. In particular we're going to review how to graph straight lines and the equation of a line. We're going to look at two different lines and see how they relate to each other in the same graph because this is a skill and a tool that we're going to use in microeconomics quite a bit. And so we're going to look at two equations of lines here. Equation 1 is y equals 16 minus 0.5x. Equation 2, y minus 3.5 plus 2x. And the standard equation of a line, the most common way people write it, is in the form of y equals mx plus b, where this m is the slope, the rise over the run, and the b is the y-intercept. And the y-intercept is the value of y when x equals 0. Now just to review a little bit more, the x-axis goes left and right along the bottom, tells us the value of x, and the y-axis is going up and down along the left side here. And so the y-intercept, let's look at equation 1 in particular, the y-intercept is the number that's alone by itself, and the slope is multiplied times x, m times x. I write equations of a line a little bit different. Most people will put the y-intercept at the end. I like to put it at the beginning. It's just the way I learned it and a habit I've gotten into. And it also makes graphing easier to me just because when I start graphing I want to know what the y-intercept is. And the y-intercept tells you once again that when x equals 0 let's, what's the value of y? Well let's, let's plug in 0 for x. 16 minus 0.5 or 1 half times 0. Well the minus 0.5x is going to go away and so y is going to be equal to 16, right? We can just kind of cover up that minus 0.5 times 0. So we know that y equals 16 for equation 1 is one point on our line. So let me draw a little red circle there so we can see what we're talking about. We know our line starts there and then what can we do next? Well, we have a few options. Now, one option is to notice that the slope is minus 0.5. And remember from your school days that uh, the slope is equal to the rise over the run. And in this case, it is minus 1 half. So let me just write that there, minus 1 over 2. And so what that tells us is that there is a minus 1 in the rise for every 2 run. So what we could do to graph this line is rise minus 1, which is go down 1, and then go over 2, and then put another dot. And we could go down 1 and over 2, and we could put another dot. And then we could just connect all those points when we're done. That's a little tedious, though. Let me give you a, a, maybe a better way to do this. Um, one way that I like to do this is uh, plug in another value of x way over here on the x-axis somewhere and, and get two points that we know are going to be pretty far away from each other. So, for example, we could just plug in 10 for x. What are we going to get if we plug in 10 for x in equation 1? 16 minus 1 half of 10. Well, a half of 10 is 5. 16 minus 5 is 11. And so now we know another point is x equals 10. I just chose x equals 10 at random. Um, if x equals 10, we know that y is going to be 11. So we can go over to that point, 10 and 11. And we can draw a dot over there. Right? So that's one way to do it. Another way that sometimes I'll do it with a downward sloping line is trying to figure out what the x-intercept is. Now the y-intercept is with the value of y when x equals 0. The x-intercept is the value of x when y equals 0. And you can do that by plugging in a value of y equals 0 and then solving for x. Let's do that real quick quickly over here on the right side. So let's rewrite our equation as 0 
equals 16 minus 0.5x. If we try to solve that for x, and we rearrange this equation, we're going to get 0.5x equals 10. And we're going to get for our, oh, I'm sorry, I typed the equation wrong. I make mistakes all the time. It's okay. So let's, uh, let's go fix that. And it's not 10 equals 5x. 16 equals point, minus 0.5x. So we're going to get 0.5x equals 16. And when we solve for x, x is going to equal 32. Now that's kind of a problem on this particular piece of graph paper that I'm working with because when y equals 0, x equals 32, that point is going to be way over here somewhere. And uh, that's not on my on my graph, so can't really do that. So let's just use the points that we have, and I'll draw a straight line connecting the points that we have and kind of see where that leads us. And I'll be very careful here to try to get it lined up correctly. Okay, that's pretty good. Now, let's graph this other equation, equation 2. y equals 3.5 plus 2x. So we know that the equation is going to begin at x equals 0, y equals 3.5. So I'll draw a little dot right there. And then the slope is 2. Rise over run equals 2 over 1. So let me um, edit this one that we have, the rise over run. Instead of being equals minus 1 half, now it's equal to 2, which we can write as 2 over 1. And writing it that way, you can see that the rise is up to over 1, up to over 1. And so we could do that with points. Or we can plug in a value for x, like 10 or 12 or 14. Um, let's plug in a value of, it doesn't matter, 7. So if we plug in x equals 7 here, y equals 3.5 plus 2 times 7. That's 14 plus 3.5. That's going to be 17.5. x equals 7, y equals 17.5. Now sometimes you have to plug in a few numbers to make sure you get uh, two numbers that are both on your little graph here. But don't get frustrated. Just keep trying a few different numbers and plugging them in. And then you can connect the dots. So here we have two equations. Now let me recolor this red line a different color so we can tell them apart a little better. So I have equation 2 is blue, equation 1 is red. Now what else can we do with these two lines after we've graphed them? Because that's really just the first part. Uh, we want to make a note of where these two lines intersect. And let me label that point right there. And it looks to me where these two lines intersect is at x equals 5, or pretty close to it, and at y equals about 13 and a half. So let's make a note of this approximate answer that we're getting from our two equations. Now what we might want to do is make sure that that actually is where those two equations cross by solving. And we'll do that in just one second. But let's just make a quick note here that where those two lines cross we think is at x equals 5 and around y equals 13 and a half. But let's verify that. How do you solve two equations for two unknowns? It's pretty easy the way we have it set up here. We know that y equals 16 minus 0.5x and also that y equals 3.5 plus 2x. Just set those two equations equal to each other then since they both equal y. 16 minus 0.5x equals 0.5x equals 3.5 plus 2x. 
Rearranging this equation, we can move the minus 0.5 over to the right by adding 0.5x to both sides and subtract 3.5 from both sides. And that'll give us something like 12.5 equals 2.5x. Divide both sides by 2.5, and, and you sure enough get x equals 5. Now, how do we know what the y value is? We want to plug that value for x into either one of these two equations. It doesn't matter. The easiest one to me looks like uh, equation 2. y equals 3.5 plus 2 times 5. So y equals 3.5 plus 2 times 5 gives us the value for y as 13 and a half. So in this case, looking at the intersection on the graph, because we drew it carefully, we could see what the right answer is. But you want to be able to verify because a lot of times you're not going to get a nice round number like that. So we want to be able to verify that. Now what else can we do with these equations? A couple of things real quickly that you might want to do. A lot of times when we're working with these equations, we will know, for example, what x is. Someone will tell us what x is. Uh, suppose they tell us that x equals 4, for example. So let me draw in a line where x equals a value of 4. You might want to know if x equals 4, what's the value of y in equation 1? Well, we can see that that's about 14. What's the value of y on equation 2, the blue line? Looks like about 11 and a half. What's the difference between those two? Well, the difference between 14 and 11 and a half is a difference of about two and a half, and we can visualize that difference as that little line segment right there. Let me draw it in yellow so we can... Uh, see what's going on there. Let's see. Let me highlight that line and change that to yellow. Maybe I'll change it to bright pink. That way it'll be easier for us to see. So that difference is two and a half. Similarly, instead of knowing what uh, x is, somebody might tell us that we know what y is. They might tell us, you know, y, we know for sure, is 14. So let me draw that in there. All right. So if y is 14, suppose we know that. Let's zoom in here to our graph so we can see a little bit better what's going on. If y is 14, let's look at our red line. Well, if y is 14, x equals about 4. Looks like it's right at 4. And if y equals 14, on the blue line, where does that put us? Looks like about 5 and a half. Now we could plug into our equations and make sure. But if we thought that that looked like uh, x is about 4, and on this equation it looks like about 5 and a half, what's the difference between those two? Well, the difference between 4 and 5 and a half is about 1 and a half. So let me choose uh, another color for that. Maybe orange. Hopefully you can tell that is orange right there. So that little gap there is one and a half. And this is just one of the analytical tools that we'll be using from time to time. So I hope you have learned something from this review of graphing. And I'll see you next time.